This is Mark and Pat again. This is test number seven, and we're here to try a couple more things out today. Um, I think we're kind of getting down to the final testing. The last test we did last week was really performing well. We're going to try out uh, a little grizzly bar system on the top layer here and a uh, set of woven wire as well. So you want to show them what else we did, Pat? Yeah, a couple things we've done. Uh, we made more of a flat lift on our little grizzly bar ramp going up to the ramp that's also part of the punch plate. And then right here, as it hits this aluminum, we're hoping that creates like a little bit of an eddy current to help kind of force feed the material through the uh, grizzlies right here. Now with this punch plate that you see here, uh, we made it so it's adjustable so we can test and open and close the aperture, op the open and close the opening of this so we can control the water velocity a little bit. We don't want too much water velocity. We want to maintain that nice slow flow see, underneath the plate. See, one thing that the one thing that's worth making this loop box work so well is we drop our water speed below the uh, the classifier screen. So with, by adjusting this, we can raise and lower the speed underneath it, and that's been the whole key to getting a really good fine gold cut. Definitely, no single sluice can keep up with this. And we're not bringing classifiers with us. I don't think we're even gonna need them. The nice thing about this, I need this, and just a, really a 12 inch pan and, and a good digging trowel good digging and tool. a shovel. Yeah. So it's kind of funny, Pat and I, we actually have a bet. He thinks this one's gonna work better and I think- Closed this, off a lot. <laughs> yeah, and, and I think this is gonna work a little better. I'm actually hoping the woven wire works better because with the woven wire, it creates so much drag on the material that everything stalls and falls through it. Yeah, it kind of forces everything yep. downward. And the water speed underneath it is really slow. My only concern about the Grizzly, and I'm, I'm hoping this will work, but is that the water speed doesn't go too fast underneath it. But that's yep. what we're here today is to test it. Yep. All right, uh, I had a couple comments on Facebook and other places. The guys were concerned about the weight. Actually, I haven't weighed it yet, but I'm gonna estimate we're probably around the uh, I'd say about 15 pounds. What do you think? Uh, to be honest with you, I don't know. I'd say probably 17. 17 pounds? 18, maybe. Now, even though the sluice is a little bit heavier, your setup time is going to be 10 times faster. You don't have to bring in classifier screens and extra buckets. You carry a lot less equipment with this sluice than you would in other sluice because it does everything in one but step. But you know what? As far as the screen goes, this really doesn't weigh. No, it doesn't. But maybe a pound. But you, but you do bit. have a couple of pounds in the legs, yeah. but you need the legs to support the sluice. Also, on this, we've gone to a little heavier duty, a little thicker uh, bracket, and we'll probably be putting that also on the mini maxes yeah, in the future. We'll make them future. Standard. But you know, every time we come out here, we're learning something new. Yeah. And it's kind of nice to be able to show everyone out there on, on what's going on with it so they can <laughs> see what we're finding out on our test. Um, you know, it's a learning experience for everyone. And, Including and, us. And hopefully that the people that are watching it out there will understand a little bit more about a sluice box and setting it up. It's a little different from this. Now with the regular sluice, you might only be running one or two inches of water flow. Uh, with the new screen, we can run full maximum velocity going over the top, but still remain the gold retention underneath the screen on the indicator mat and the first sections. But for the simple fact that we're finding almost all the gold in the very first third of the box, that's a huge thing. That's what we've been trying to accomplish through all of our testing. Okay, one, one other thing too, I've had some comments about people asking about us, will the box work in lower velocity waters? And the answer is yes. If you take this classifier screen off, and you pre-classify your material, you can run it in very low water conditions. So it works in very high speed water and also very low speed water. This is probably not how it's gonna be during our production, but I, I just pulled this out of the little lip in here, which locks in the holes that are uh, by the classifier. So I pulled that out and I'm gonna be putting this one in here. a little bit hanging in that one corner. Oh, oh, oh. Oh. 
All right, so overall the sluice box did a pretty good job. We had a couple weird things happening in the sluice box that were really strange we didn't quite understand. So we went ahead and flipped the screen over and we discovered that our production manager had made a couple changes that we didn't really notice. It was real sim something very simple. The uh, grizzly bars were a little longer in the front than we thought and also we had an angle iron frame built underneath the aluminum punch plate that created some weird eddies under the sluice box and it caused some of the sluice box to, to run a little bit on the clean side. All right, we didn't get quite as much good footage that we would like to see in the sluice box running. Um, unfortunately, I had the camera set in slow motion, as you can tell. And it's kind of cool to watch it for a minute, but you really don't get the full impact of what the box is doing unless you're running, you know, typical real-time videos. Um, some of the good news that I was really happy with the box, you know, I wasn't sure if the grizzly bars were going to work better or the woven wire, and I was really pleased to see that the woven wire probably did the best job. And that's because it creates a, a much greater drag on the material and it really slows the material down underneath it. So I believe that's going to be the way that we go. You can try to break it off. Yeah. I say pin teeth in a little bit and pop it off. That should fatigue now, through the river, there. The rivets are small. Will they pull through? Yeah. Oh, cool. I hope. You know, we should bring a drill with us, Pat. Of, of... I got one in the truck. Oh, you do? Yeah, I just wanted to MacGyver it. For what it's worth, I think that, that woven wire is working really good. I think you owe me five bucks. <laughs> I, and you know what? Until we get the right test. <laughs> Come on, I want my five dollars. Okay, have you got the lip off? Got it off? All right, now, let's, now to do a little hey, bit Pat, of... Hey, let's pull that uh, lower plate off too, that one right there. All right, so we went ahead and removed that back lip just to see what would happen. Well, Pat and I both agree it's creating some funky uh, back pressures underneath the box, and it was forcing when some of the ripples were a little cleaner than we thought it should have. But overall, it's been working pretty good. So we're back, put it all back together again, readjusting, and we're going to try... Uh, so far, I think we both kind of like the woven wire. And, uh, no. No. We're still testing. We don't know yet. You just don't want to pay me my five dollars, Pat. Pat <laughs> <laughs> hates to lose the I bat. believe on conclusive test. Wow. And I hate hate eating crow. <laughs> Hard work this is. I mean this is our what, seventh time out? Yeah. And we thought we were going the right what do you think, Teddy? We thought we were going the right direction, but we actually made a wrong turn, so you know, sometimes you over-engineer stuff, yeah. and you have to go back to where you were to where you're getting your best results. I think we ought we should also, as a fair test, go back to the front punch plate, the front punch plate ramp, get rid of this, and try the woven wire. Right I here. still think that front lip worked really good. I do think it worked, but I think they changed it on us during the manufacturing process. Yeah, I think it's just that that using that longer piece at the very front. Is creating almost like a ripple to it. Yeah. It's just so bizarre. A little change like that can make everything different. So I think we should still do uh, another goal. I think we should run at least one good goal test. I like to go back. You got something to say? Let him go. Let's let's eat some lunch and let's do a goal test and uh, back to the drawing board. Sounds good. All right, guys. Let's show everyone. There's exactly 10 pieces of flakes and a whole bunch of super fine crush stool that's been liberated from ports. So Mark's going to toss this into the bucket, kind of like, and then he's going to get pre-wet the material so we don't have any flotation. You could. Are you worthy? I'm worried, but I know you're nervous about your gold. I am. <laughs> Oh yeah, dry gold. Look at that. It wants to float. Show that. That, my friends, that's how dry gold yep. could be added to water, and you get a flotation effect. That's really look good. at that. Look at that. Doesn't want to go down. Okay, it's sunk. Oh no, there's no, still. No, it's still, still float. I'm just gonna dump in here, Pat. Yeah, do it. Don't spill any of that goodness. Just in case. Okay. All right. Okay. Uh, we mix it up a little bit. Thank you. All right, so I'm processing the bucket of the salted material. 
And you can see I'm getting a little help from my dog. He always has to be in the middle of things. But uh, we both had fun. Pat and I had a fun day. A lot of work, but a lot of fun. Anyways, you can see the, the sluice box is just gobbling up the material. The rocks are passing through it nicely. Big rocks, small rocks, they're all going through without any, any problem. Um, so once we made our couple little modifications, the whole thing started working, you know, can still be better. It's still, we have to make some more changes in the, the front grizzly. That made some really peculiar changes in the way the box performed. You know, it's really surprising how funny it is when you make a small change in a sluice box, how things will work and not work. In production, they just made a minor change in, in the height of the grizzly bars in the front and the ankle iron frame. And it really did affect the overall performance of the box. So it really does tell us that, you know, it does take time to get this stuff dialed in correctly. And we're getting closer every time. Green out, see what it looks like underneath. Remember, it's got to kick a little forward before it pulls out because it's wedged in there pretty good. Yep. Oh, a lot of heavies in there, that's for sure. Yeah, we got a couple of rocks in there. That's. Well. I'm going to see where the gold's going to be at without splashing it. Do that again. Okay, we pulled the sluice out. You see where there's 10 larger pieces. There's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Still caught all that gold right on the indicator mat. If you look real closely, You'll see some of that fine stuff, but we moved it around a lot and we tossed a couple bucket loads of water, so. It moved down, we dropped the it, it moved down, but we were running real high velocity water. But the material that was uh, directly underneath the uh, woven mesh seemed to do a real good job. And before we messed with this too much, before we lifted it out, most of the black sand was kicked behind the riffle instead of in front of the riffle like a ramp, which isn't good. No, but that's just we didn't pick it up right. But that's yes. <clears throat> okay, we just uh, pulled the riffle off and we can see where the expanded wire was here. We have a lot of material displaced since we've been moving around and trying to also wash out the riffles. But what I wanted to see is if I was getting the fine stuff in here that is moved away from here, from pulling it out and everything else. But one of the other tests, we actually saw a lot more on the indicator mat, but we were running a lot lower velocity. We were kind of going for extremes on that. Let me see if I got any color in here. Really okay. What I'm curious about, it's what's in here and what's in here. So we're going to pan that out separately to see what we have. Very carefully. Let's get it in the stream. And let's wash this mat out. You can only wash it, the, mature, the gold out of it one direction, so you have to be kind of careful. Of this. We caught in the back of the box probably about maybe a dozen pinhead sized pieces or fly poop, whatever you want to call it. Fly poop. Fly poop. Oh, that's flea shit. That's flea shit? That works for me. <laughs> so, about half a dozen little pieces. Hey, get a shot of this. Look at that. 
That's really a nice black sand load. Oh yeah, I'm seeing all kinds of uh, real small stuff is in there. Is that from the miners Miracle Mat Pat? This is from the Miracle Mat. Okay, I'm gonna do the head mat here. But I'm not down to the bottom of it yet. All right, look at look how coarse that stuff like is. Like you can start to see it pop up right there. It's all over, what are you talking about? It's all in there. We still call that fly poop. Oh yeah, there's a lot of it. Today we probably had uh, close to half of the black sands, or half of the super fine stuff in the miracle mat. That's going to be the real telltale if Mark doesn't lose all the fine gold pan in there. <laughs> I don't think so, Patrick. Hey! <clears throat> don't make me, Mark. <laughs> hey, just because you pan like an old lead doesn't mean I have to. I'm just kidding. <clears throat> That's right, you know better. Thank you, Daddy. <laughs> Thank you. You deserved it. <laughs> he knows what he's doing. <laughs> well, you know, the gold's so heavy, the really gold really shouldn't migrate much, if any. No, and it's not, it's getting caught in here. Oh, what's that? Oh, just some lead, it looks like. Some lead shot. Yeah. Number two. Oh, wow. Okay. Yeah, you, you're, you're you got a lot of it in there. So you had about half a dozen pieces in the bottom carpet. You had, how much did you have in, in the Miracle I didn't, Map? I had a little bit in the Miracle Map, but not, My, not as much nothing as this. like what you had there. Okay, so what's happening is you're catching a little bit, some of the super fine, the bulk of it, and most of it's not getting into the the main sluice yet. So that, that's... Well, I'd Here say... we go, look at that. Yep. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. You might have washed something into your, your bucket too, Patrick. I saw that. We already counted the big ones up on top though. But all the fine stuff, was that put in there or was that... Sluice? No, that was the stuff that was still in the uh, still indicator in, mat. In the indicator mat. Oh, really? Yeah. So we got everything back, it, it appears. Um, the only thing that concerned well, me, we have to make a few more changes. We, I Still, let's make that front grizzly shorter. Let's do a little more. A little, little bit more of an angle. And, yeah, and a little bit shorter as well. Here, I think it's a, the length is I think much. I think two inches, T. Hi, I'm Mark Keen from Keen Engineering. I'm here with my brother, Patrick. And we're just going to go through, so show you all the different innovations we're working on for an A52 sluice. This is our basic A52 that's been around for about 70 years. This is kind of the platform that Mark's going to show you some of the items. All right. Um, one of the coolest things on the A52 sluice box is this removable flare system. We have the same basic bolt pattern that we've had for probably close to over 30 years now. So we have a lot of attachments that you can add and remove to it. Um, down to the most basic ones, this is basically an extension if you want to add two sluices together. And again, this just replaces the same bolt pattern. Um, one of the most popular ones we have is our high banker hopper. This is a, a somewhat of a, like a medium sized high banker that we power off our small little uh, P90G motor and pump. This would power, that same motor and pump will power the high banker. It will power uh, a two inch or a two and a half inch dredge nozzle. And what's nice is you have more than one option with the, rather than just a high banker hopper, we have kind of an old school header box design that you can convert the, the sluice box into. We have a jet flare design that you can convert the sluice box. We even have our, one of our most popular machines, which is our Minimax, that is easy to convert over. And the Minimax is probably one of the most innovative products that we've made in a long time. Because the Minimax is one small compact unit that's lightweight, and it can easily convert into a high banker, a sluice, or a concentrator all in one unit. One of the most unique designs that we're starting to put towards our other unit is we have a, we have a leg design that you can pull a pin and you can pivot your legs and you can also adjust the height of it. It's an excellent design. Uh, we also use uh, a taller rubber riffle and we also use the miracle mat. Now the Miracle Mat has been out for probably about three or four years. 
This is the only kind of riffle that is considered a rejuvenating riffle. It's a Hungarian riffle. We made over 23 different prototypes of this particular riffle design. And this works great in sluice boxes and stuff like that. It works best when you classify the material. But we're also working on a new design uh, of a taller riffle, and that's gonna be out very soon. One of the other features about the Minimax is it's 12 volt, yeah. it's silent. You, don't, you can go into areas, people aren't gonna know you're there. Sometimes it's better to be kind of hidden, and the less people know, the better. But this is a great system, and with the 12 volt, it's silent. And you can also, now, we can take the flood hopper and run it with 12 volt, and we can also set that on top of a regular sluice box. Yeah, we're, we're back using that same bolt pattern with the, just changing the end cap, you can switch it to a Minimax. So not only can you run the Minimax with a gas engine, or just the river power, you can also run it with a, a battery system. So me and Pat are really excited about this new product. This is our latest innovation in sluicing. This is our A52S sluice. And basically this is an accumulation of a lot of things we've learned over the years. I'm sure some of you guys have been watching our videos, but and we're still not quite done with our testing, but we're coming near the end and we're getting really good results. And we made a lot of uh, interesting things uh, that we're doing to our A52 sluice. Number one is we got a super heavy duty leg set up, the same type of Minimax legs. Uh, me and Mark, we've been going back and forth with some of our friends and we have a couple of guys that are testing it. Yep. We've been utilizing different screens, different size openings. Yeah. Uh, why don't you show us you got, uh, some of the screens there? Um, this just gives you kind of a typical idea. We have a Grizzly in the front and basically just allows the, the material to immediately get into the lower sluice. We run the punch plate so it slows the material down underneath it. And we're trying a variety of different, <coughs> punch, a variety of different punch plates, um, woven wire classifier screens. You know, hey, one thing though, Mark, you're kind of forgetting the most important thing. I know. And, and that's probably, we have gone through probably 25 different variations of different riffles, different classifiers, uh, different size openings on the ramps and stuff like that. But this is basically what we're getting down to. This is what we think is gonna work the best. We've been doing all this testing. But we've made tons of mistakes too. I mean, we've been out so far seven times and we've had a lot of fun doing it, but uh, we're finally coming down to the line. But it, it's really interesting, and Pat will agree with me, the slightest change in the way we design things or engineer things makes all the difference in the world. I didn't think it would be that picky, did you? No, but you know what? You know, it, it, it's, a, it's a learning curve that we're going through as well as a lot of people that are, are watching us. But these are kind of like the final screens that have been working real well. And we're excited to go out and, yeah. and work with it. And we're excited to show everyone exactly what we're doing. And, you know, you're learning kind of like we're learning as we're, as we're going through the throes of all of this. Yeah. And, um, you know, we've, we're trying things like grizzly bars so the rocks slide directly over it. We're trying, trying a, a uh, woven, the woven mesh. Right, a woven wire. Even though Pat won't admit it, I think this is my favorite screen because it creates the most drag on the material. And you know what? I, 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 actually, I actually agree with you. To get my $5 now? Yes. <laughs> uh, you know what? I, I actually agree that, that this works really good. That's why in the version that we had uh, our guys do yesterday, um, I didn't want to have uh, screens masking it. Uh, from all of our combined testing and stuff like that, we think that this is gonna be one of the one of the winners. Either one of these two here. And you know what? We've been scabbing all different types of things together to come up with a workable solution. We're probably gonna make maybe a couple different variations yeah. also because uh, different conditions. Well, you have high water flow, you got medium water flows, you got slow water flows. Yeah. You know, this really seems to excel in fast water. It seems to really capture the fine flower bowl, which are really excited. I think this is going to be probably one of the best years that we've had in a long time for gold it's prospecting. Right. 
We've got record rain, record snow, and all the rivers are at flood level, and they're gonna be carrying a lot of gold through the river this year. It's gonna wash a lot of gold off those hills. So I'm kind of excited about I it. I am too, I think we both are. Yeah. And the one thing that, that really excites me about this leads to working all these conditions is that we're gonna be able to process a lot more material with a lot less effort. Look, the name of the game is, the more material you process, the more gold you're gonna find. And with this loose box, you can dump buckets of rocks and gravel and whatever you want into it, and it'll wash right through it. And, and, and you know what? When I'm sitting there and I'm shaking a classifier yeah. uh, in, a bucket of, in a bucket filled with water, that takes a lot of time. And you're hanging you're material twice, too. I think we're going to be able to move a good four or five times. I agree. And, and I, I think with our, our new little sled that we're working on to pull the material <laughs> across to get it to the sluice, yeah. instead of carrying buckets, pull a big sled right over to next year's sluice and just shovel stream bed material, rocks and everything right through the sluice. Yeah. I'm excited. More material, more gold. That's right. And also the, the, the fine gold we're covering on this thing, not to beat it at a horse, is just phenomenal. You know, getting that material classified as it passes through, through the riffle boards, dropping the water speed down below the classifier screens is really the main trick to maintain that optimal recovery. And we'll also show you some more videos of our, our next test. As yeah, well. and uh, with some of our most recent tests, we're actually getting 90% of our gold within the first uh, quarter of the sluice. Yeah, that that's huge. Well, you got to um, tell. We're barely finding any gold down in the lower level, and we're finding no, virtually nothing at the end. Yeah. In in our last test, we found maybe half a dozen little pinhead sized pieces in the rear riffle well, board. Well, hold on, not even pinhead. Little specks, fly specks. Right, and, uh, and in the middle, in the, the Miracle Mount, we found just a little bit of fine flour. In the upper section, underneath the expanded metal and the carpet, we found probably the majority of the fine gold. But really, all the, 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 the larger pieces were all up in the indicator mat. They didn't even make it down to it. We also, at the end, we checked our tailings, and the tailings were clean. We found nothing in our tailings.